Hi everyone, good afternoon or good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. This is Karen. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on the button. I am today continuing with my Bible study called It Is Well, Walking Away from Anxiety and Into God's Word, which this is taken from the Daily Grace Company which has many, many, many Bible studies and many other Christian-related materials. So with that said, I just pray that you are all doing well. I know this is a very difficult time for us all. And this book, I pray that it will help you in some way. And with that, I want to open up with prayer before I get into the study. <sighs> I just want to, this verse came into my mind. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to preach your word. I pray that whoever is watching is blessed. I pray that they receive a word that would comfort their hearts, spirits and their hearts. Holy Spirit, just please move me out of the way and you take over this Bible study. Help me to preach and to, to teach the words that you want to be taught and to encourage people right now, especially with what is going on in the world. We know that you are in complete control, God. We love you, Jesus. I pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so this is, we are on week two, day five. Next week will be the last week. And then I will decide what topic um, I will be um, on. Okay, so right now this is, today's reading will be taken from Psalm 13. And it's verse five. But I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your deliverance. Amen. And it reads, A man after God's own heart. Okay, I hope you can see this. Good. Okay. David was... An insignificant shepherd boy from an insignificant place and an insignificant family. He would become king of God's people. He would make many, many mistakes. He would write numerous songs. He would escape certain death frequently. He would have sweet victories by the power of God and deep dark defeats because of the indulgence of sin. David absolutely was a man after God's own heart. His lineage would bear the Messiah to the world. But David's righteousness and love of God did not make him flawless, nor did it guarantee him an easy life. David's life was filled with sorrows, sins, and enemies much like our lives. David wrote many of the Psalms we have in our Bibles, and these ancient songs can be, can be divided into five major categories, lament, praise, thanksgiving, royalty, and wisdom. As many as 67 of the 150 Psalms can be categorized as la lamentation. These psalms recognize the suffering of this world and provide an avenue of expression to those in the midst of plight. Songs of lament have a general pattern that they follow, pleading for deliverance, description of the problem, petition for help, and a resolution to praise and trust in God. David began, be, begins Psalm 13 by coming to God, asking 
why he has forgotten his servant while simultaneously describing the depth of the problem. How long would the Lord forget David? How long will David be coerced and tormented by anxiety? This psalm begins with questions that you and I likely ask often. In verse 3 to 4, David moves on to a prayer, pleading with God to restore him and put his enemies to shame. The last two verses exemplify David's trusting his God. Though troubles befall him, David commits to rejoicing, I'm sorry, to rejoice in the deliverance that he knows that God will provide. He will still praise God because of his faithful and constant generosity. There are many things that Psalms of Lamentation teach us, and there are many things that the Psalms in particular can show us. But one of the most uh, prominent things that we see here is that it is okay to feel. David felt the distress of being chased by his enemies and running for his life. He felt anxious in his circumstances and depressed in his trials. But as surely but as surely as we see Psalms of Lamentation ending with trusting God, we see David recognize that his feelings aren't necessarily facts. He didn't let his feelings lie to him about the character of God. He didn't let his feelings rob him of rejoicing in all the ways that the Lord had made him victorious over the troubles of life. Our feelings can work for us or against us. And when battling the beast of anxiety, we must be diligent in identifying which category they fall into. Feelings of anxiety, fear, or doubt can strangle us. But what if we make these harsh feelings serve us? Feelings can be used by God to draw you closer to him. Like the psalmist, though we experience troubles of every sort, on every side of our lives, we have a call placed on our lives to steward them, making sure they serve us in our discomfort. Let us learn about God and cause our minds to resound with remembrances of God's unchanging faithfulness. When sorrow rolls over us, let us be faithful to God as he has been faithful to us by taking our feelings captive and making them obey Jesus Christ, causing us to remember God's goodness as always, as we always ought to. Amen. So that is very powerful. David, as we know, yes, he was called, he was called a man after God's own heart. So I will go on now to the questions. And the first question is, what are some of the ways that our feelings can bring us closer to God? So I will answer. Um, for me, I would say that in my anxieties, in my fears, in my depressions, I have found that turning to God helps because at the end of the day honestly God is the one that is going to deliver us from our fears from our anxiety we have to be in the word we have to remember what the word says and one of those things that it says is that fear doesn't come from God God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So fear, if it's not from God, who is it from? We know it's from Satan. So we have to learn how to recognize that. I'm not saying it's easy. 
I am not saying that it is not that it's easy at all. We are all human. And when things happen, just like what's going on now, it's chaotic. Things are unknown. The future is unknown. Yes, we it's it's a human emotion. But then we have to just reel it in, settle our hearts and minds, and even if you open up the Bible and read a psalm or just pray, help me, Jesus, calm my fears, calm my worries. So I feel that the negative feelings that I feel actually draw me closer to God because honestly, there is nowhere else to go for comfort. Okay, so the second question says, what are some of the ways that our feelings can place a wedge between us and God? Well, just like feelings of worry, depression, anxiety, stress can bring us closer to God, they can also bring a wedge to God because then we could start thinking in our mind, which, of course, the enemy wants us to think, oh, you know, God, where is God now? You know, you're in all this, this distress and you're praying and you're getting no answers. So now what? You know, where is he? Why isn't he helping you? And this is even in the Psalms. David has written Psalms that says, you know, he's very transparent. He has said, where are you, God? Why are you not answering my prayer? And sometimes, God, we pray and he's silent. That's not a good feeling. But we don't know. God sees all. He's working behind the scenes that we can't see. So we have to continue. We have to be consistent. And we have to just keep crying out to him. He's not ignoring us. It's just his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So don't let fears, worries, anxieties place a wedge between us and God because without God you think you know I've think yes life is difficult it's 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 no it's not walk in the park but without God it's really really bad okay so number question number three the last question says how does preaching God's goodness and faithfulness to our feelings help shape and mold our relationship with God? So let me read that again. How does preaching God's goodness and faithfulness to our feelings help shape and mold our relationship with God? Well, for me, in doing this study, it's helping me. Um, what I read and what I... I mean, I don't see myself as a teacher. I've not gone to like Bible school or seminary, but I feel my personal experience, I pray that it helps someone maybe who was feeling the same way. Um, and talking about it because you know what? We're all human and we all have, we all, ex you know, experience these feelings. We all are created by God. So. It helps my relationship with God because each time it reminds me when I open up the Bible or I read this devotional and I read about David, who was a man who sinned, who was not perfect, who fell, but he also always, always turned to God and asked for help. And that is the difference when you continue to ask God for help. Yes, we fall, but we have to keep getting up. And remembering that God is there. He has not left us. So that helps me. That encourages me. And that brings my relationship closer to God. You know, like I said, I'm not saying this is easy to do. But the more we do it, the more I do it, the closer I feel to God. And to me, like right now, with what is going on in the world, there's a lot of unknowns. We don't know what's going to happen from day to day. You see the news and it seems to be getting worse. But God does know. So just remember that. He knows and he will be there for us. Through our fears, through our anxieties, he will calm us. So I hope that this study did encourage someone. 
Um, please, as I said before, if you have a request or prayer request, I will pray for you and keep you in prayer. And thank you so much for all watching. Um, and I just will say a prayer and then close out. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this study. Thank you so much for allowing time in this in your word and for resources that we have though we not no though we cannot be physically with a lot of people right now in church or with fellowship this is the way we can fellowship and i thank you i thank you that we have phones and we have youtube and we have you know there's ways that we can still communicate you know back in the day it was like oh well you know write letters basically so this is a blessing and I thank you all I'm I thank you I'm sorry thank you dear Jesus for always meeting our needs thank you father I love you so much I pray this in Jesus name amen so I want you to all have a wonderful weekend God bless you please stay safe and I will be uh I will see you all next week well, I'll have my other videos in between, but I will all see you next week for the final week of this Bible study. Again, God bless you and thank you. Bye.